Test automation can be done with a huge variety of tools. Playwright, Cypress, Selenium, WebDriver, I.O. All of them quite awesome and all of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. WebDriver I.O. is still quite amazing because you can do two things with WebDriver I.O., which are UI automation and mobile testing automation. And that's why people are still using it in quite a few cases. And that's also why I'm going to show you guys today how to set up WebDriver I.O. for the first time. And also I'll show you the basic configuration of the WebDriver I.O. so you guys could have this test automation tool behind your belt, as well as a few others that you might have already seen. And if not, I'm going to add a list of those in the link right below this video or right here. But let me quickly remind you who am I, and then we're gonna continue to the screen recording. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a founder of Comify Bootcamp that helps people like you to become a QA automation engineer from scratch, just like this guy or that girl. Well, you can see their list of those videos right below this video. Anyways, let's continue to a screen share. Let's install WebDriver.io. So step number one, Google WebDriver.io, navigate to webdriver.io. Right here you will see quite a few options. Feel free to get them, take, take your time and get familiar with the website. For now, I'm going to quickly download it. So I'm gonna click on Get Started. Gonna scroll down, initiate a WebDriver IO setup. So I'm going to just copy the first command and go back to VS Code and install it in a folder that I am already in right here. WDIO. By the way, you do have to have certain version of the node to be set. I think it's 1817 or other one. I did install 1817 before I went through this. Um, I went through this video. Okay, so first question that I'm getting, a project name W.O. was detected, is it correct? Yes, that is correct, we are in it right now. Uh, what type of testing would you like to do? End-to-end, -end component, desktop, I think end-to-end -end is what we need. Where is your automation backend located? So we're going to run our local machine the way you guys, you guys got used to. But just FYI, you can pay quite a bit of money to all of these any of these services and they will run it for you. Pretty much you'll be able to kick off your test here, run command like something like npx cypress run, but for the WebDriver IO. And then it will run tests not in your local, but it will run them actually on the cloud and you'll be able to run dozens if not hundreds of tests in parallel but that will cost a lot of money to these services so we're going to continue with our local web application not mobile that is correct chrome is fine mocha is fine uh, unless you guys want to use something else but usually i have used mocha in the past do you want any compiler no we're not using typescript we don't need babel so we're not using any compilers i don't i don't think i've ever used those in the past to be honest do you want to drive a yoti auto generate tests yes i'm gonna put y and hit enter what should the location of your spec files be? And we're going to choose the default one. Uh, so our folder right here, WDIO, task, specs. That's how it usually is. Uh, do you want page objects? Absolutely, yes. Where do you want your page objects to be located? Test page objects is fine. I'm going to hit enter. Uh, which reporter do you want to use? I'm going to use spec reporter. That's the default one. And then if you need anything else, we'll install it in the future. Do you want to add, let's see, a plugin to your test setup? Okay. In this case, we're going to choose one if we have to and wait for should be fine. Would you like to include visual testing in your setup? I don't think we're gonna have time for that, but if you guys if you guys want, you could do that. Although I've chosen no, it still tells me that I have to... Oh, no, this one is about services. Do we need any services installed? Um, honestly, I don't think we would need any services to be installed. If we will, we will be able to to set it up later but well rerun should be fine uh, rerun might be handy because sometimes if you guys have flaky tests rerun is the way to actually get through them npm install for you absolutely run npm install for me let's see what it's going to give us success boom everything has been installed uh cool moving forward let's get back to the browser 
I think it was this one, yeah. Okay, so we've installed it, it's awesome. Now, w, okay, we could also run this command and it would says, just say yes automatically to all of the options. Then this thing is the same as dash y. Run your tests. Okay, let's wait with the test. Let's take a look what we have here. Test folders, specs, and page objects. That should look familiar to you guys. And our test folder will have quite a few examples. So we're importing something. Uh, I guess we're importing page objects. You guys can see same describe and it, and that comes from Mocha actually, just FYI. Await, the only difference you guys will see here is async and await. And remember that in the sync await mode in JavaScript, you will, all of the awaits will only work when they are inside of async function. So the function should be async in order for await to work. Awesome. Okay. And let's take a look of what we have here. So we have a method open inside of the login page. And then we have a method login and we are passing two arguments, uh, two string arguments, two username and password. And then we're expecting to some uh, flash alert from this secure page object to be existing. And then we're expecting secure page flash alert to have text containing. And it's crossed. It might must be for the reason. Let's see, why is it crossed? Element text includes the text provided, but there is no explanation. The declaration was marked as deprecated here. Okay, so somewhere it was marked as deprecated. Use in oh, okay. Use expect to have text instead. Instead of to have text containing. Okay, that's fine. We, we can update it later, but I think it should still work for now. Um, okay, let's take a look at the page objects. To understand them so login page okay that should look familiar to you guys we've got a class we've got a getter we're getting input username and we're returning dollar sign and uh, uh, and a selector and you guys can pretty much familiar uh, you can see this is familiar to you instead of the cypress dot get we're just using dollar sign and that's the difference uh, with web driver io it is also very simple in some cases even simpler as them uh, as cypress and in a class we do have to have that our function async in order to use awaits inside just fyi that's that should be the rule so we're waiting, setting values, buttons, clicking, and those buttons are right here. And you're, we're utilizing word this. And if you remember, the scope of this is a class or an object that you guys are using where this is located. So as soon as we say this, it means inside of this class, there will be this getter or this function. Uh, cool. Here, I want to talk to you guys about uh, extents class extends while you guys are watching and enjoying this video i want to remind you that hitting that like button and leaving a comment below helps this video a lot and this channel to become more popular on youtube which will motivate me to record more high quality videos just like this one for you so please make sure to do so and a quick reminder if you guys are interested in learning more about a qa about a qa automation or you need help with the interview preparation with the hr or with the engineering manager i'm going to leave a link right below this video so you guys could get help with those topics. Let's continue. Some of you might have asked me in the past or talked about it in the past where, where the question was what do we do if we have a multiple selectors that are on the same, that uh, multiple selectors, multiple locators on a different pages with the same, how do we say that, uh, multiple elements that have a same selector that are located on different pages and do you duplicate do you put them in a different page objects or do you put them in one so page.js is a one main page object that is that can be shared or extended by other classes so pretty much if we would if we would have this selector or this element duplicated instead of having it in in the login page and in the secure page we can simply move it to this page object oops i didn't copy it 
Let me just copy that. We could simply move it to this page object. And here in the login, we don't even have to have it. Now, no matter where we are, we can import login page object, uh, for example, in this test. Uh, and we can run we can run this code right here and it will still work because this will refer to actually let me show you the better example let me put this one back put this one back uh, and move let's see uh, this all of this code we're gonna move it to page.js so page.js now contains our input our submit button and the and the login right so it is not in the login page, it is in page.js. And what's happening here is we're saying, hey, in the login page, there will be a login method. And if I click function F12, it will get inside of it. Hold on, I didn't remove here from here. I just copied from here. Let me remove it. Boom. And come back to test. Okay, now, same thing. We're saying inside of the login page, there will be a login helper method. So function F12, and it goes to page.js. It's not going to login.page because it's not here anymore. We've removed it from here. But login.page extends page.js, which means everything that we have right here, all of this code is located in the page.js, but it is treated as it would be right here in the login.page. And that's exactly how WebDriver IO uh, decided to handle shared methods or shared getters or locators, whatever you want to call them, to put them in the one shared location or one main shared page object. But I'm going to move it just for the readability. I'm going to move it back to to login page.js. And you might ask about this open method. What does it do, especially the word super? So it specifies here that we're overriding specific options to adapt it to the page object. If you go to page.js, you will see that we have an open method. Open and it returns browser URL, which is just like site.url and the base URL plus the path. And in a particular page object, we can overwrite it and say super, which pretty much means there will be a, um, we're, we are talking to another class which we're extending. And there will be a method open and we want to, into that method, we want to pass login. So what happens is we're utilizing this method and we're just, pass, we're just passing login slash login right here. So now we're going to go to whenever we say login.page, uh, login page.open, it's going to navigate to our open method in login page, but this method is utilizing super.open. And I'm going to do function F12 here, and we're going to get to the page. So think of it of three levels. This is the level one where we have actual test. When we get inside of the page object, we're going to be in a page object. That's level two. And the third level, which is the deepest, is the page.js, which is like our main or global page object that is shared with majority of page objects. All right, and that's what gives us ability to simply say login page dot open and it will in the very easy words explain that we're going to go to the login page. We don't even have to pass login or something here. We're doing it at the page object level. Great. And then we are exporting login page and we are importing it here right there. Uh, great. Now it is a time to run our tests. Let me go back here. You can start your test suite by using a run command and pointing WebDriver.io config that you just created. Okay, uh, let's not do that. Let's take, take a look at the WDIO config file, just like a Cypress configuration. So this is the huge file that specifies a lot of things. You will see why it is beautiful and why it is not. Uh, why I like it? Because you can specify a lot here in a different way than you would do it in Cypress. And this looks more user-friendly to me. 
So you can specify what specs do you want to run. And by that mean what specifications or what, what test files. And we simply specify the path here and it says uh, test dash specs and then some folder name and then some file name. The star star means folder name, star dot js means file name with extension dot js. But which is, uh, let's see, we have our driver IO then slash test which is right here, slash specs, which is right here, and then uh, slash star star. We don't have any more folders, so we can simply remove that. So specs and then a file name. That's how, how we're going to be able to run any specs inside of, uh, in any test files inside of specs. But in the future, you will want to create another like another layer of the structure, you will create a folder right here, for example, called, I don't know, uh, homepage. And you would move all of your tests about a homepage to that folder. And then for the other pages or other features, you would create different folders. And then you would have, you would go back here and add, uh, you would specify that there will be a, a layer of folders and then there will be JS files. And it is one of them. Um, okay, exclude. You can also exclude some of the files that you're going to be running. Uh, some of the, if you want to run everything except certain file, you can just specify it right here, which is kind of cool. Uh, max instances. That's an amount of uh, maximum amount of threads running in parallel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we can read it right here. First, how many instances should be started at the same time? Let you three different. Oh yeah, that is correct. And also you can specify capabilities such as browsers. So you can run multiple uh, browsers on your computer simultaneously, which I don't think Cypress allows to do actually. And this is the benefit of it. Log level. You can specify different log levels. Uh, info will give you a lot of logs. I usually specify adder only because you don't want to see a lot of output. We don't care that we're clicking at the button unless we unless that button click fails. So if you put, leave info, you'll see a lot here. And I'll show it to you guys in a few. Uh, bail. That's a good option. If you only want to run your tests until specific amount of tests have failed, use bail. So pretty much if more than five tests are failing, then you don't want to run anything else. You just want to fail in everything else. So then you would specify bail out on five, but we're going to put zero because we don't want to bail. Uh, wait for time uh, for timeout. That's a default one. Connection retry timeout. That's a default one. And many other options. Framework is mocha. That's what we specified. Reporter spec. Uh, behavioral driven development. BDD. Global timeout of one minute. We can also change that. And there are such a cool things as before command that runs before all the tasks are executed. Runs before WDO commands get executed. Before suite. So that will run before every uh, file, if I'm not mistaken. And then before every test. And you can specify that on a global level. Not only in a certain... It's not like a chai, uh, or what do you call it? It's not like a mocha before each test. Either you specify in the page right here. You would put it in the describe, right? Right there. You'd put it in the describe before each, and then it would something will run before each thing. If you want to do it at the global level, you can specify it right here, and some code will run before every single test throughout your entire framework. Awesome. There are many more options, mostly hooks before, after, but now it is the time for us to run at least one test. And we can do it in multiple ways. We can say, hey, run all of the tests utilizing this config file dot slash uh, wdao conf.js which is right here so we're going to run it since we have only one test here execution of one worker started which means we're running only one thread in parallel at this moment and we're opening up our Google Chrome and it's passing. Boom, awesome. That was very quick. We didn't even have enough time to, uh, to look into. 
Cypress is quite different because with the Cypress we have an entire Cypress window where you can see all of the tasks and things. WebDriver IO is different. It only opens up a browser when it needs to run the code. So you don't have to. Um, you don't have to have anything open. You simply kick off your any task you want, it will run, it will shut down, that's it. Then you can also specify certain spec. You can run only one file. Uh, for example, dash dash spec means we're going to run only one or multiple files. You can actually copy it, put a space, and then another spec and another spec. But I'm going to remove those. And we're going to run only one spec. I mean, generally we have only one, but I just wanted to show you guys that we can uh, run things separately. Kicking it off. Taking a look. Starting, logging in, verifying, success. Awesome. Uh, run in a script. I don't think we want to stand alone. I don't think I want to dig into uh, other options. That should be enough for us. Uh, cool. Now we're going to get started with actually automating a website.